Well, again, good morning and welcome to our Remembrance Service. It's great to have you all with us this morning. Those who are watching live now on, on Sunday morning and those who watch this recording later on. It's, it's always good to gather. And this feels rather special today to be able, to be able to do this with many of us gathering all simultaneously and interacting. So welcome today at our, our service. Psalm 62 says the first two verses and Edith's going to read the rest to us later. Psalm 62 verses 1 to 2 say this. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. We're going to sing in a moment, uh, Be Thou My Vision, a song which picks up on, on some of these themes. But first of all, shall we pray? Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the technology that you have given us that allows us to gather like this together, to meet even when we're not allowed to be in the same building at the same time. It enables us to keep in touch with those of us in the next street, even in the same building, but also around the country. And it's great to see uh, friends from, from days past joining us as well. Thank you that through the work of your son and the power of the spirit, we are one despite our separation, despite our distance from each other. And thank you that you are here with us this morning. Lift up our hearts and our minds that we might see you, that we might mm -hmm. be opened to your glorious presence for you are our god and we long to be with you our vision our wisdom our treasure and our lord amen amen, amen. Well, we're going to sing together be thou my vision if i can get this to work
Ben, you're muted. Sorry, Ben, you still are. <laughs> I said it's all about living riskily. There we go. Can you hear me now? Grand. That comes from unmuting at the same time everybody else unmutes me at the same time. We all end up all over the place. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are just that. You are our vision. And we pray that you'll give us the gift today of being able to see you, of hearing from you, of being able to draw close to you, of experiencing you as we gather together as your family as your children celebrating that you are our great father amen amen well some family news um as usual there be a a prayer meeting on monday morning at half past nine links will be sent around later today so don't panic if you've not got them yet if you're interested in meeting others after that that the big local are holding a coffee morning at half past 10 and I'll circulate details of that at the same time. And it'd be great if a few of us could, could join them for that. It'd be nice to, to mix with our wider local community. Although my, I must apologize, I can't do that. I've got an assembly this week. They're still letting me into the schools despite the lockdown. So do pray for, I was to say, do pray for them. Uh, I'm going in, they need prayer. Uh, we've got on Wednesday night our next Bible study. We're continuing looking at Esther. And if you normally come, it'd be great to see. But if you've not been before, you'll still be very welcome. You're, you're welcome to dip in and out of our Bible studies as, as you want. It's a great chance to explore together God's word. For some reason, the next song has started. Where are we? Um, also coming up this month, we'll, uh, after today, we'll revert back for now for pre-recorded services. I say today is, is a bit of an experiment, a, a one-off. But we're hoping that maybe during the month that we might join at some point with our friends from, from Rosedale. And actually today, when we have some video later on uh, during our, our moments of silence, that's come from Bethany Green, the minister at Rosedale, who's prepared it and shared it with us for today. But we're hoping that we're able to have a joint service at some time very soon as well. And, and even there's a chance we're, we're looking into making some joint services for the whole of Connection. So maybe, maybe one Sunday we'll uh, put our normal service aside and join with others from around the Connection to celebrate on a larger scale. Talking of the wider connection, our church in Eastbourne is holding a, a Zoom conference on Saturday the 21st of November and they're looking at training in personal evangelism and they've got Roger Carswell as their speaker for that. It starts at half 10 and there'll be a couple of sessions for that and I can send around a link so if anyone would like to go and hear and join in that we've been told you'd be more than welcome. So thank you to our, our friends at Eastbourne for inviting us uh, along to that. And as usual today after the service, we will have our, our post-service uh, chat, but rather than leaving this and then coming back in, uh, we can just continue straight after. So we'll say the grace and then you're, you're welcome to stick around. Uh, I'll leave the, the meeting open and you, I'll stop recording, of course, at that point. Uh, and we can have, have a chat, catch up with each other. But if you want to nip out and grab a, a cup of first, of, of course, uh, do that. But as I say, this morning, a couple of activities for you. So if you're feeling artistic, um, I did those printout sheets of pictures of rainbows. And this year, we may have seen lots of, of windows with pictures of, of rainbows in them from the, the first lockdown. And when the rainbow was taken as a, a symbol to celebrate that the work of the NHS and our, our key workers helping us, uh, looking after us, rescuing us uh, during the, the, those early stages of the pandemic. And they were bringing us peace and hope in troubled times. So if, if you fancy drawing a rainbow for us this morning, uh, of course, we can do that and celebrate still the NHS. But also remember that the story in the Bible of, of Noah's Ark. Uh, how, how God uh, brought freedom and a fresh start uh, to his people through the, the, the flood. And at the end of that, there was the, the rainbow in the sky, that symbol that was a, a promise that God would never do that again, but also God would look after 
his people and has brought them into peace. So every time we see a rainbow, we can remember that that God is a God who brings us into peace. So if you want to colour a rainbow in for us today, it could be one of those sheets. It might just be a rainbow of your own design. Get creative. You can do that and show them to us at the end of the service. Uh, if you want a different kind of challenge, something else you can work at maybe during the service, if you have a, uh, uh, if you're able to multitask. Um, here's a, 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 another challenge based on Matthew chapter five, verse nine, where it says, blessed are the peacemakers for they should be called children of God. And a simple word challenge in the past, people use slings to hurt each other. And of course, we have the story of David and Goliath, don't we, where uh, uh, David used the sling and knocked Goliath out with the, the sling stone. But today, maybe we don't use slings like that so much, but we do uh, sling words around and insults around and cause violence through that. So your, your challenge is to try and get from the word sling to the word peace by a series of steps. Each step you change one letter in the word and it's got to make a proper new word and how many steps through proper words can you take changing just one letter at a time to get from sling to peace so you've got to do it as fast as you can so something to maybe work out in the side while we while we worship this morning well, I said our reading this morning was Psalm 62. Edith, I believe, is going to bring us our reading. Edith, don't be like me. Don't forget to unmute before you read. Yes. Yes. Mm. Our reading is from Psalm 62, a Psalm of David. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence? They fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Low-born men are but a breath. The high-born are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in, in extortion or take pride in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things have I heard, that you, O oh God, are strong and that you, O oh Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what he has done. Thank you, Edith. Well, in a few minutes, we will mark the two minutes silence as you remember those who have died in conflict. And obviously this is a major part of remembrance, isn't it? Remembering those who fell in the two world wars. And it's important that we remember and learn from those terrible times. But maybe it also involves remembering uh, not just those caught up in those conflicts, um, but also remembering um, the conflict that we're involved in and the way in which we live sometimes that causes strife and, and hurt 
as well. So we remember those who've been caught up in conflict in the past and even in the present, those who've been, been wounded, those who live with their injuries, and those who lost loved ones in the war and have lived through the consequences of that. We can remember our own part to play today in, in bringing conflict, in causing conflict, and we can seek forgiveness, knowing that God is a merciful God and will forgive us. But also maybe as we remember that that might inspire us to seek to live lives that are not disruptive, that are not divisive, that are not hurtful as well. But this year, I, I want to extend this. We, we live in days, don't we, where conflict seems to be continually in, in our lives, continually in the headlines. Uh, and not just physical conflict, maybe, but conflict nevertheless. Uh, we've had the, the American elections, uh, our recent votes on government and Brexit in this country. Th these events have been bitter and divisive, haven't they? We, we really do seem to live in angry times when people can't get on with each other and seek to say, well, you're not one of us and we are not you and put up those barriers between us. And, and I think it would be good to pray for peace at this time, peace in, in our nations, peace in, in our communities, peace in our families, not, not just a, a cessation of violence, but a rediscovered unity. And I hear that Joe Biden last night was talking about unity, but true unity is something really hard to achieve, isn't it? Something to be treasured and striven for. So let's be inspired by today, inspired by our, our remembrance to seek not just not to cause conflict, but to seek to create and work towards unity, bringing people together who were apart, helping people to listen to each other, to talk to each other, to find the, the common in each other and to have that desire for the, the common good that sometimes we seem to have, have lost at the moment. And then of course we have another battle, don't we? Not just that, that battle against people, but the battle against coronavirus as well and we see in discussions around that at the moment uh, a, a growing divide over how to respond to the pandemic do we do this do we do that should we have a lockdown should we not have a lockdown should we give these people money should we not give these people money? all those kind of things uh, our country is far from united on this issue as is the same in in other nations and it'd be good to pray that in at this time we can overcome that growing divide. So we can pray for, for healing. We can pray for an end to the pandemic and pray for protection for the soul of our nation, which is, is divided already, that this wouldn't divide us any further. But maybe we'll find ways of coming together, of listening to each other, finding consensus and caring again for each other. But as we remember as we reflect, as we pray, let's recall that we have something that seems to be often lacking in the world around us. We have hope. And hope means that we can live graciously. If you haven't got hope, you live anxious, scared, defensive lives, worried lives, but we have a hope and that gives us the freedom to live differently, doesn't it? Because we know how the story ends. We can afford to confess because we have hope. We can recognize our failings because we have hope. We can listen to others because we have hope. And we can live positively, believing that peace will be found and ultimately all will be good. And what is the source of this hope? The source of this hope is not from a peace treaty. It's not from a ballot count. It's not from a, a track and trace app but something far greater than any of those things. Our hope is not a thing or a wish or a treaty. It's God himself, as we sung earlier, our great father. And this is why I picked Be Thou My Vision, because it's all about that. It's about a, a song that, about finding peace and security and protection in the midst of conflict and knowing that love wins because of the heart of our lives is God our father. And this is the language of the Psalms, isn't it? The language of covenant, of relationship. We have hope because of God. Hope that comes from his sending his son to be with us, to bring us out of conflict with him into peace. 
we have his vote. God has voted for us. He has chosen us. He's elected us to be his children. And we can celebrate because of his test and trace scheme. He sent out ambassadors to find us. Who brought you to find out about Jesus? And who can you go out and share the good news of the hope that comes through Jesus with? Who can you invite into the family? And that, of course, is now our task. And so now we're approaching the, the, the two minutes silence. So let's let's pray. And during the science, maybe we can reflect and remember, yes, conflicts past, conflicts present around the world, but also that the pandemic and the divisions in, in our lives. But most of all, let's find hope in our God. I'm just going to share the screen again and bring up. The video I mentioned. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that in you we can have hope. And knowing that hope now, we, we gather as your people to remember conflicts past and present and to seek your peace. Let's share this moment of silence as we remember. Heavenly Father, we remember those who have fallen in conflict. We remember those wounded in wars past and present. We remember those who lost loved ones. Those who live under fear. Father, we remember those and reflect upon our times where we know division, where we are disunited, where we fight with words and attitudes. And we remember those involved in the battle against the pandemic all around the world. Father, as we remember, we are conscious of our part in causing division and pain and conflict. We're sorry for the things we've said, the things we've done, the things that we've thought that have caused hurt. Forgive us, Lord. And Father, we would pray that you would help us inspired by the saving work of your son 
to live and to work for peace, for unity, healing division, growing good relationships, and centrally sharing the love and good news of your son, Jesus Christ, who came to save us from our violence and bring us into your glorious peace. Amen. Amen. Well, Tim's going to now lead us in a time of communion. Tim, over to you. Well, thanks, Ben. Um, now, if uh, anybody has not remembered that we were going to have communion, now is a good time to uh, make preparations if you've got bread or wine or something that looks like it. Um, ben talked about the bringing together of those who are apart. And this morning, mm -hmm. as we come to remember Jesus, that's what he did, wasn't it? He brought together those who were apart yeah. us into the yeah. of God with no, uh, no distance between us anymore because of what Jesus has done. And um, this morning, we have this uh, very simple way of remembering Jesus. Mm. When, um, when our boys left home for the first time, uh, sometimes it was uh, taking them off to university or taking Jack off to Heathrow Airport to fly off to Australia. Goodness, we thought we'd never see him again. Um, he was bound to lose his passport and his phone. And so uh, what happened? Oh dear. Um, but I always felt a bit of a failure as a father on t at times like that, because I could never think of really wise things to say. You know, I, I wanted to say, ah, oh, my dear son, just remember, remember something really important. And um, I was never very good at it. But, but Jesus, for him, it was much worse, wasn't it? Because he was leaving his disciples, these uh, 12 or, or more, really, uh, people who had followed him for three years. They'd learnt from him. They'd uh, listened to him. They'd seen him do wonderful things. And then they were going to see him die. And he knew that. And he wanted to give them some way of remembering and you can imagine can't you that he he would have thought well what's the most important thing to remember and today we've we've remembered those who lost their lives in in conflicts and and as ben said we hope that we remember and learn that never again should that happen but sadly it doesn't always we don't always learn but Jesus thinking of his disciples saying, what's the most important thing for them and for us? And so really the most important thing is our position before God, isn't it? More important than anything else is our relationship with God. Because if that's right, then everything else falls into place. You know, you might have the most horrendous financial worries uh, with the pandemic. You might be terribly worried about getting the virus. You might be going through the most awful time, but the most important thing is that relationship with God because God can carry you through. <clears throat> and so Jesus said to his disciples, do this, take bread and remember me. And I love the fact, and I know I've said this so many times before, I love the fact that it's it's just bread. It's something really every day. He didn't say, take caviar and have a Christmas dinner once a year. No, he said, bread, something daily. I, I, I guess quite a lot of us, those of us who aren't on diets, um, uh, have had bread already this morning. And as we take bread, Jesus says, remember me because this is my body given for you. That's how much he loves us. He gave his life so that we could be free. And so we're gonna take bread and, and share it together. Um, and 
remember his body broken for us. Let's give thanks. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the amazing gift of your life. That sacrifice, the way you took our place. You took all the things that we'd done wrong and all the things we're ever going to do wrong. And you paid the penalty for them. And Lord, we just worship you and give you thanks. Lord, we praise you that you are you're, you're able to forgive because you lived a perfect life. And willingly you gave up that life in our place. And as we take this bread, we give you thanks and worship you. Amen. <clears throat> so on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And having given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. And let's eat that together, shall we? And, uh, and just remember Jesus in his love, giving his life for us. Was there any other way? Well, the, the, the law had said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. We couldn't be forgiven unless blood was shed. And Jesus fulfilled all those pictures in the Old Testament, didn't he? Of a, the lamb that was slain, the sacrifice that was made, the scapegoat, where people would bring a, a goat or a, a, a sheep and, and put their hand on it and as a picture of uh, and then the the goat would be killed as a picture of transferring our sin to that goat but Jesus in shedding his blood washes us clean let's pray Lord Jesus we thank you that by the shedding of your blood by the giving up of your life you give us life, eternal life that will never end, that will be rich and full and starts now. Lord, we worship you and give you thanks that you loved your own and you loved us to the end. There was no holding back. And so we take this wine and, and drink it together as a token of our oneness in your body because you have made us one you've united us in you and we give you thanks in your name amen, amen. <clears throat> this is the blood of christ which cleanses us from all sin be good as god has made us one and made us a part of the same family mm -hmm. so we to just spend a few minutes if we could in prayer together i think yeah, okay. live in a world which uh, is in quite a mess and so maybe if we could um, spend a few minutes i wonder if we could take a great risk and uh, if you feel like praying uh, pray now you can either Unmute yourself and we'll all uh, share with you, or you can pray muted and then we can't hear. But um, let, let's pray together and pray for one another. Father, we thank you that you have made us a family, that uh, we're not just servants, or, but you've made us your sons and daughters. And we 
bow in worship and praise. Thank you for one another and for the encouragement it is to come together like this, for the blessing of fellowship together. And we would pray this morning for those who can't be with us. We pray for Terry back in hospital and pray that you'll be close to him and for any others, Lord, who aren't here this morning who would love to be. We hold them up before you for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the privilege of being here this morning. Father, we just praise you for your great love, the love that went all the way to the cross. Mm -hmm. Father, your name is great. Amen. 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 Father, I pray for the ways in which we have opportunities in this coming week as your people to share uh, this good news, the hope that we have. And I, I would pray for the schools, for, for Wormley and Broxbourne Primary Schools. Lord, as I, I take assemblies, help me to share that good news of the unity that we have in you, that you draw us together. Well, give me the right words to, to share. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you that you are such a great God. There is no situation too big for you and no situation too small. And so we, we just pray for the uh, people in America. And pray that you will give a healing and a unity there that will um, heal some of the rifts that there are. And Lord, we pray that as the world faces this pandemic, so we Mm. the light of your gospel and the love and hope that you mm. give will shine out really brightly mm. and so we commit one another to you for this week mm. we pray that uh, we might learn new ways of sharing your love and your grace mm. we live in these strange times lord help us to be centered on you as our rock and our salvation our fortress so that we are never shaken we worship you this morning in jesus name amen amen, amen. well thank you tim for leading us in that we're going to to sing once more um, with the song one thing remains your love never fails and what an important message that is to hold on to oh. god's love never tim, fails uh, ben yes paul i 
satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid One thing remains One thing remains Your love never fails, never gives up Never runs out on me Your love never fails Never gives up Never runs out on me Your love never fails Never gives up Never runs out on me Your love In death, in life I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My debt is paid, there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives it up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. Because on and on and on and on it goes, it overwhelms. Satisfies my soul, and I never ever have to be afraid. One thing remains, one thing remains. Oh, your love never fails, never gives up. Never runs out on me Your love never fails Never gives up Never runs out on me Your love never fails Never gives up Never runs out on me Your love Done it again. Isn't it good that we have a God whose love never fails? That as we go out into this coming week, we may know no matter what we face, no matter what trials or troubles or even opportunities, He is always with us, working in us and through us, bringing His peace into our lives. The words of the doxology from the end of Jude say this To Him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Shall we close this part of our, our worship by sharing the grace? Shall we do that? Maybe you'd like to unmute yourself. I know it sounds a bit chaotic, but it's Kind of nice to be able to hear each other when we say this, isn't it? Ben? Yes, Paul? Uh, I think they've sung that one at Rosedale. Fantastic. <laughs> Worship unites us all over the place, doesn't it? It's great. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah. If not, you'll have to teach them, Paul. And so the grace. David, David might know. <laughs> he would indeed. He would indeed. Yeah. Hey, the grace... Of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the, of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 Right, I'm going to press stop record now. Yeah. Right.